Hi everyone, this is Dheeraj Nayal, Global Community Ambassador at DevOps Institute, and I will be the MC for the technical track connecting the finance stack. Hope you all have enjoyed the break because we have a fantastic agenda lined up for the next section. So for the next section, presenting the first speaker, uh, Akshay Sait, Principal Software Architect at FactSet Research System. And he will be sharing a, a, a terrific presentation on reimagining the investment workflow using APIs. So Akshay, welcome to API Days Live Singapore. Thanks, Siraj. Thanks for having me. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Akshay Sher. Um, I'm, I work at FactSet Research Systems. Um, so in today's session, I'll be talking about um, how we were able to transform uh, not just the client processes that uh, we have with our clients, but also fact set internally. Uh, the emphasis on microservices and APIs, um, we were able to you know, use the power of those two and really transform the business internally as well. I uh, hope you guys are having a good conference. I was able to attend a couple of sessions yesterday and I found it really insightful. So if you have not attended other sessions, I would highly recommend it. And um, on a somber note, the last year has been very hard for everyone. So hope everyone's um, staying well, staying safe, and hope your families are staying well as well. All right, so let's start the session. So a bit about FactSet first. Uh, FactSet is a global company. Uh, it's based out of uh, the US uh, and headquartered out of the US. Uh, it has locations in more than 20 countries. Uh, it's really a financial services company which offers content and analytics to its clients. Um, some of the marquee products that FactSet has includes portfolio analytics, risk analytics, portfolio optimization, screening, and alerting, um, and many more products. Um, a lot of these products um, have FactSet's reference data and market data in them. Over the last 40 years or so, uh, FactSet has been able to uh, reinvent itself with the changing technology landscape. Uh, the first product that FactSet delivered, this was in late 70s, was really a, a product which is hand delivered to the client. So we've come a long way over the last 40 years and we've really uh, adapted ourselves um, to the changing market trends as well as technology trends. Uh, and we believe in meeting the client where they need us the most. So um, be it with our products, be it with the solutions, be it with the support. We have a broad spectrum of products right from, the, uh, from all the way to the buy side to the build side. If a client of ours uh, is a traditional shop uh, and they want to get a package solution, we offer that in the form of a terminal or a workstation. Uh, we also offer the flexibility for our client to get the best of breed analytics um, and content that we offer through APIs and data feeds. So if there is a client who wants to combine data from FactSet with some other vendor, they can do that with APIs and data feeds. With the breadth of solutions that we have, it makes it easy for our client to access our product and service if they are on the go through FactSet Mobile or FactSet Web. They can do that through their workstation if they are in the office or at home. And if they want to build uh, and integrate uh, with FactSet content, they can do that with APIs and data feeds. So FactSet realized the importance of APIs a few years back, uh, and it, it invested heavily in the API program. The idea with the program was to start small. So we created an incubation team, which I was a part of, and the team was tasked with creating APIs, which would work for our clients. But the reason for starting small was uh, we wanted to go out and talk to early adopter clients. So they could really test our APIs and give us firsthand feedback. And based on that feedback, we would iterate over our um, APIs and then build out and scale out the program. So in the incubation stage, uh, there were really three stages that we had to go through. The first one being awareness, followed by implementation, which is the obvious one, and then go to market. In the awareness stage, the first thing we focused on was to create a program which worked for the user by keeping the user at the center of the program. And what I mean by that is um, when, some, when, uh, when a firm or an individual starts building an API, 
the easiest way to build an API is to take what you have internally, understand the system, and build an API and release it to the user. But what's important is to understand how the user perceives the API and how easy or difficult would it be for the user to use it. So taking an outside-in approach where you keep the user as the focus versus what's easy to build. The second thing is also to make sure is that similar to a product which has a user interface, it's important to have the developer experience in mind here. When you have a product which has a user interface, there's so many uh, recommendations and, and best practices to create an environment and really wireframes which create a product which uh, makes it easy for the user to use it. Similarly for an API, it's important to focus on the developer experience because once the developer is at the center of the program, the APIs would be easy for, for them to use and they would want to use more of it. The second thing that we had to go through uh, within FactSet was to demystify APIs for the non-engineering community within FactSet. Traditionally, a lot of the sales teams and client-focused teams uh, had were, were experienced with creating and, and selling products which had a user interface. So it was easy to touch and feel and really show the product when they visited clients or when they had to show it to the prospects. With APIs, it gets a little technical and it makes it harder for sales teams and, and client-focused teams to really take those products and show it to their clients. So what we wanted to focus with the API program uh, when we started it internally was to create abstractions and tooling. So it helped our sales teams um, to understand the power of APIs. We also wanted to challenge our engineering teams and product teams uh, to understand what a regular sales cycle looks like. Traditionally, engineering teams and product teams don't spend too much time with clients directly. But with the API program, we wanted to make sure they understood the sales cycle. They understood what went in, in a traditional cycle, what were the, the collateral that the sales team or the consulting team needed and met them halfway. So really start pitching APIs uh, to internal teams and to clients if need be. And finally, creating documentation, which is crystal clear, not having too much technical jargon, working with technical writers, having seminars and webinars internally to create that environment and create that awareness internally which makes it easy for both the, the client-facing teams as well as internal teams to understand the, the intention behind the program and to work as a cohesive unit. Once we were done with the awareness stage, we moved on to the obvious one, which is implementation. That involved all the right software development lifecycle practices. So that was you know, uh, writing a good quality code, using the right design patterns, having testing done well, securing your API using authentication authorization methods, and having monetization rules. Go, after we, we, we were done with the implementation stage, the last stage was go-to-market. The first thing we focused on in go-to-market was making it easy for the user, be it internal or external, to use our API. On the dev portal, where we have all our APIs hosted, we wanted the, the ability for the user to look into their usage going back in time. This would give them confidence in all the API calls they've made over a period of time. So we did that as, as the first thing on our dev portal. The second thing, as we started releasing our APIs to early adopter clients, we realized that it would be easier for the clients to have onboarding artifacts in the form of software development kits or SDKs. We identified key languages for which we needed SDKs, and we started releasing those SDKs that cut down the onboarding time by almost 50%. We also invested time in creating native connectors and BI tools. There has been a large adoption of BI tools like Tableau, Power BI, and Click in the FinTech space. Having those native connectors in those BI tools makes it easy for our clients to take data from FactSet through APIs and integrate it in solutions. Uh, in this case, the, Power, the BI tools. And finally, having pre canned dashboards to show what can be done uh, and creating a template which can be reused by clients. The second theme was to create strong sales collateral. The early adopter clients that were successful in using our APIs, we wanted to work with them to create case studies which would help our sales teams talk to prospective clients. 
The other thing is with webinars, both internal and external, it creates uh, the right amount of awareness and engagement with the sales and consulting teams so that they have the right ammunition to go out and talk APIs when they talk to clients. One of the other trends we saw once we started accelerating our incubation stage was as we had more and more APIs on the dev portal, there was a pattern to which those APIs could be combined and used. So we realized that it would be better to have a formal way of recommending uh, how different set of APIs should be used. And Faxet came up with the uh, came up with recipes. And as the name suggests, um, recipes um, are really a, a combination of ingredients. And in this case, it would be APIs, which would be the ingredients. So we recommend a recipe to our client if they want to combine different set of APIs and make their solution work with our APIs. After we were able to successfully create the incubation program, uh, the challenge was to scale it up across the organization and across different departments within the organization. We realized that there were services and infrastructure components that could be reused across different teams. So we started emphasizing on that, not just to dev teams, but also support teams. So they, they, they keep that in mind and we build reusable components internally. The second aspect of scaling was having governance so that APIs that are built uh, in different departments look and feel the same way. If I'm an external user and I'm using a vendor API, I want the, the confidence that irrespective of which department is building the API, I'll be getting a consistent experience both in terms of usability as well as support. We created several governance groups which were responsible for ensuring that there were consistent um, APIs which were released on the dev portal. We created standards around API structure. That involved uh, naming conventions for the query parameters that went into the API calls. Uh, we also documented how the response and request format should look like. On the versioning side, we defined what a breaking change would mean for every API. That's easy to forget when um, APIs are being built internally. But as more and more APIs get released, the, the concept of breaking change becomes critical because when a new breaking change is introduced in an API, the client has to spend that much amount of time upgrading to the next major version of the API. So having clear policies of what defines a breaking change was important to us. We also defined consistent versioning, support, and retirement policies for different versions with the governance groups. Over the last couple of years, as the program has exploded we ha and we have more and more APIs, we've realized that the central governance groups uh, are not scaling well. So we are trying to decentralize that and have representatives from different departments chime in and review APIs. The next stage for us for governance is to automate a lot of those checks so that humans don't have to be involved and we can make it an even more seamless process. Doing all the steps through the incubation and through the scaling, we've been able to inculcate an API first mindset. Now, when a new product gets built at Faxet, um, irrespective of whether it has a user interface or not, all teams internally are thinking of creating an API. Teams rely on uh, products and services internally using microservices and APIs. And that's really made it easy to scale up systems internally. And there are benefits to that to the external user as well. To the present day, we have over 50 APIs now uh, on our dev portal, which is available at developer.faxet.com. The APIs have um, are touching on products uh, right from the portfolio analysis suite uh, to our content and research suite. We also have SDKs for most of our APIs because we want to make it easy for the user to start using our API and cut down their onboarding time. And I can't stress on the onboarding time and just cut, focusing on that because far too often when APIs are released, it's very hard to integrate with them because there is one, not enough documentation or there isn't enough tooling to understand how to integrate with it. Even if you manage to somehow cobble integration, the next time a major version is released for the API, you have to spend an inordinate amount of time. So creating those packages would make it, which make it easy for the user is extremely important.
with our API program, we have been able to also transform a lot of client processes. And that was the, the fundamental goal of the program is to start small, create APIs, and then move on to uh, digitally transforming a lot of processes that clients had with Factset. Here are four of the common ones that we found once we started having clients use more of our APIs. The first one is an internal dashboard. And the idea is simple. Um, a client here wants to get the best of breed content or analytics from different vendors. So they don't want to be tied to a single solution. In this case, they, they, they use Factset's APIs and they power their solutions. The second case is, um, is kind of an iterative approach over the internal dashboard, where instead of internal users on the client side using it, they want to open it up to their user base. So this is uh, really important for us because uh, the client wants to continue using Factset's product and Factset services, but wants their user base to have access to it. This is only possible through APIs. The third use case that we've seen is BI tools. And I spoke about this a little earlier, but the idea being with tools like Power BI, Tableau, and ClickSense, you can easily build visualization on content that's coming in into these BI tools. So we wanted to build native connectors working with these BI tool providers, making it easy for our clients to use the content and analytics that's developed by Factset. And finally, uh, for corn shops in the fintech space, uh, they like getting uh, data dumps uh, through Python and R packages. So we spent time creating packages for both those languages, making it easy for corn shops to download data and start writing you know, and building visualization through these tools. The last thing I want to touch on today is uh, how do you go about building a successful program? Over the last several years at Factset, we've been able to create a program which has worked for us and scaled well. So I, I, I realized it would be nice to have some of the lessons outlined on what we learned through our journey. The first one is unlearning to learn. And what I mean by that is when you're creating an API program or you're thinking of creating an API program, it's important to not use a standard software development practices. Public APIs, once a, once a public API is released to a client, it's there for eternity, or rather for a fairly long amount of time till the next major version comes out. So it's important to give emphasis on design and several other aspects of API. When we started our incubation effort, we wanted to make sure we're not forcing what we knew, what we know of APIs and learning of how other companies have gone about building their own API program. So we started reading on about white papers and conferences like these really helped us understand how other companies went about their own API program. So we learned a lot of lessons from other companies. The other thing um, in this theme for us was ensuring that we are not limiting dev teams internally to build APIs with limitations, either which are organizational in nature or system limitations. We wanted them to think outside in, keep the user at the center of the program and create APIs that work for the client. So that was the other theme where we, we tried to break the, the traditional way of creating a product and think of the user, put, that, put them as the, the center of the program. Second theme is not reinventing the wheel. The first part here is um, about creating an API. There are, there are standard life, API lifecycle stages. You start from the design stage, you then move to the develop stage, you secure your API, you decide a monetization plan, and you start advertising the API. There's a fair, there is a structure that's worked for most companies. So rather than reinventing the wheel, um, rely on that structure and create an API within that framework. The second thing with APIs is make sure that you use an agile methodology. It's okay to build fast and fail fast. Iterating over an API by releasing minor versions to the API will make it easy for the dev teams to keep make, making changes to the API, but at the same time, not waiting for a perfect product because there's al there always the next major version that you can build. And finally, governance. I can't stress enough on governance. As more and more APIs get built in your firm, it's easy for them to not look and feel the same way. Having governance either automated or by humans makes it easy to have consistency, 
and it fosters collaboration because it forces teams to really think about how other other APIs from uh, different parts of your company look and feel. So having governance at you know as a key pillar of your program makes it easy to have consistency and make it easy for the end user to use APIs from your company. With that, I'll open it up for questions. Thanks a lot, Akshay, for a fantastic presentation. And in fact, it is fascinating to see that how much FactSet is doing with respect to reimagining as well as I would say re the overall APIs B2B platform with the respect to different set of clients you are dealing with. So uh, thanks a lot for sharing all these information. So from the audience, we do not have yet any of the questions, but uh, going through your presentation, I was really uh, fascinated to know more of the, uh, specifically from the scaling the API's perspective, because from different organizations, we see when they scale the API's, that's where the biggest challenges lies. So you already shared some of the, uh, uh, learn lesson as part of your own journey within the organization but categorically if you want like to uh, uh, highlight some of the challenges you have seen in scaling the apis i think would be really good for the audiences yeah absolutely thanks for the question Deeraj. yeah i think i touched on the the larger themes in scaling but um i think one of the other technical aspects in scaling is just the infrastructure right um and it's not when i talk about infrastructure it's not just the, the capacity or the load uh, of the requests that are coming in, but it's also creating uh, that common shared infrastructure that teams can start leveraging. So having uh, a central API gateway, uh, which enforces rules on requests and responses that are going out and coming in uh, is really important. Uh, having a, a single identity system, uh, which uh, so that you know teams internally don't have to worry about handling authentication or authorization rules by themselves is also important. So. Uh, yeah, uh, I think it's it's important to kind of invest as a firm in infrastructure, which benefits internal teams from not having to kind of think about those problems again and again. Absolutely, and thanks for answering that. And before we end this session, I think one more question which pops into my mind is also, since you touched upon that as well, is about defining the API taxonomy uh, to accurately also assess the system readiness uh, or avoiding the pro proliferation of incompatible APIs to prioritize for business value. Because ultimately, I think various organizations focus on the business value as part of the overall implementation perspective. So uh, you also touched upon how FactSet is doing that. And I think that is really valuable for the audience as well. So any uh, last tip in order to focus on the business value from the organization while they implement or focus on the API architecture as part of their journey? Yeah, I think th that's an interesting question, Deeraj. I mean, um, you know, if, if I can kind of spin it a little and, and, and you know, um, ask people to also focus on the metrics that are being evaluated to kind of decide, you know, what's considered successful for an API, right? Um, you know, obviously, you know, companies are investing in APIs because, uh, you know, you want revenue to kind of pour in with the API. But at the same time, uh, there have to be different metrics for development teams versus, um, you know, client-focused teams. For development teams, you need metrics like, you know, um, uh, can the, the onboarding time be reduced? What's the percentage coverage in terms of data or content? Uh, and you need very different set of business metrics around revenue, the number of users you're using your API for client-focused teams. So having clear metrics uh, which work for the right function uh, and the right functional group within the firm is very important because uh, if you try to apply the business metrics on dev teams, uh, you know it's not really going to work because they, they don't work in that in, the, in that domain. So having the right metrics and and um, you know quantifying it and you know following up on those uh, will help you ensure that you know the 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 dollar is being invested correctly. Awesome! Thanks a lot, Akshay, once again for a fantastic presentation and also answering the queries which we have. And hope to see you in next year edition of API Days Live Singapore as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Stay safe, everyone.